Heavenly Father, bless this unknown boy. This was what the headstone of an unidentified four-year-old boy read for 66 years. In 1957, February 25th, the body of a young boy was found in a cardboard box on the side of the road in the Fox Chase neighborhood. The boy was beaten and naked. For years, this child was known as the boy in the box because he couldn't be identified. This case was known as the longest continuously investigated homicide in the history of the Philadelphia Police Department. Thanks to genealogical genetic testing, the authorities were able to establish who the four-year-old boy is, but they are yet to find out who killed him and why. At a busy footpath in northeast Philadelphia, where residents usually dump their rubbish, a child was found. He was nude, wrapped in a cheap flannel blanket, lying face up, with his hands carefully placed on his stomach. The boy appeared malnourished, but his finger and toenails were cut short, neatly trimmed. It appeared as if his hair had also been recently trimmed, close to the head, and seemed as if it was a hurried job. Clumps of hair clinging to his body made it look as if someone groomed his hair when he was unclothed, either shortly before his death or after. The child's body was covered in bruises, particularly his head and face. The bruises seemed to be inflicted at the same time. The cool weather at the time made it difficult for them to determine how long he had been dead. It might have been two days, but it could have also been two weeks. After they found the body, they started looking for evidence scouting the area and trying to find the person responsible for this heartbreaking act. Not too far away from the thrown away child, a man's white handkerchief was found with some short strands of hair clinging to it. The handkerchief had the initial G in the corner. After sending the handkerchief to the police chemical laboratory to compare the hair found on it to the hair of the dead boy, the results were negative. Other evidence found nearby were all dead ends. Not only were they not able to find the murderer, but the identity of the boy could not have been established. This case haunted the community. A boy's life was ended, and his entire identity and claim to his existence was taken away. A photo of the boy was posted all over the city, used as a resort from the police to find the identity of the boy, and to help catch his killer. The unknown boy who was violently murdered by multiple blows to the head stayed anonymous for more than 60 years. After numerous attempts throughout the years, and finally in 2022, the headstone that always read, America's Unknown Child, received a name. The Vidoc Society is a volunteer group who aids in resolving cases. This group helped over the years searching for answers concerning the identity of this boy. Many of the people who had a hand in helping with the case have died over the years because it had been dragged out for such a long time. Naturally, the mystery around the death of the boy led to wild rumors. Some even thought that he may have been a Hungarian boy who arrived in the United States during the 1956 Hungarian Revolution. After being buried, the boy's body was exhumed in 1998. During this time, the technology had advanced significantly, especially when it came to DNA samples. A post-mortem was conducted, and portions of his remains were retained for further investigation. It was complicated because the boy's DNA had degraded. This made it difficult even though the technology was so advanced. In 2019, his body was exhumed once again. A forensic anthropologist examined the remains and obtained enough DNA to apply modern forensic techniques. The results were uploaded to DNA databases and interpreted by genealogists. After receiving the results, the detectives were in a fortunate position to track down possible relatives of the boy on his mother's side. After more investigation and testing, they were led to the identity of the boy's mother. A court order helped the detectives to obtain records from the state, which included the birth, death, and adoption records of all the children born to the mother they identified between 1944 and 1956. They were able to secure birth certificates of two children born to the mother. After discovering the name of a father on a birth certificate, the detectives contacted possible relatives of the child on his father's side. After connecting DNA of the father's side to that of the mother's side, they knew who their unknown boy was. 
Joseph Augustus Zarelli was identified by genetic genealogy. Both of his parents are also deceased, but some siblings outlived them. The investigators found the house he was living in and learned that he was never reported as missing. Even though this boy lived such a short life, he has experienced horrors that no one should ever be subjected to. The first step of the investigation was completed. Usually, this is the easiest part, but in this case, it took years to unravel. The next step is to find clues about his killer. Because the boy is now identified, it might lead to someone having some answers or ideas about who killed him. During the years, some suspects arose. Mrs. Margaret Martinez of Thornton was arrested in 1960 after she admittedly threw her three-year-old daughter's body into a trash can. Margaret matched the description of a woman who was spotted standing next to a parked car near the spot where the boy's body was found in Fox Chase. She was questioned by the former head of the Philadelphia Detective Bureau's Missing Persons Division, but no connection was established. In New York City, a five-year-old girl was found in a park in August 1957. The cases had some similarities, but after investigation, they learned that there was no link between the two cases. In October 1998, a special Boy in the Box segment was shown on America's Most Wanted. About 150 tips were called into the hotline, but most of them were theories about the case. They also had a few people who described their dreams or visions in terms of this case, and some psychics called in as well. A very small percentage of the group of people who called in were actual positive leads or tips, although in the end, none of them led to anything. Some examples include, in California, a woman reported that a man she knew fled Philadelphia under suspicious circumstances. Local authorities interviewed this woman and sent a photo to the lead investigators of the case. The photo was that of a boy that could have been the boy in the box's half-brother. Unfortunately, this was as much of a reach as it sounds like, and it turned out to be a dead end. In Indiana, a young boy disappeared and was never seen again. This occurred when a carnival came to town less than a year before the boy in the box was discovered. It resulted in nothing, as this incident had no connection to the boy in the box case. In New Jersey, a woman had a news clipping she had saved about a New Jersey boy who was missing. She insisted that it had to be the boy she saw on America's Most Wanted. The lead detective on the case phoned the newspaper who posted that article, but again, there was no connection. The boy in the newspaper had gone missing five years after the boy in the box was found. A man showed up at Philadelphia Homicide to file a report about his half-brother, 14 months older than himself, who had gone missing. He said that his brother mysteriously disappeared around the time the boy in the box was discovered. He said that his family kept it a secret for years, and he also mentioned that the hypothetical bust of the boy in the box's father, created by a forensic sculptor, looked the same as his own father, who was deceased. Unfortunately, after the detective tried to track down the other relatives who might be able to add to the man's story, he declared this lead as a dead end. It is a shame that all the above-mentioned tips and leads led to nothing. If they knew the identity sooner, the boy in the box would have had a name on his headstone much earlier. Luckily, because of the talented work done by genealogists, his name was uncovered for the first time in October 2021. They matched his DNA to his second cousin once removed. And on December 8th, 2022, the four-year-old boy was publicly identified as Joseph Augustus Zarelli, who was born on January 13th, 1953. The boy who was unknown for years can now peacefully rest as Joseph Augustus Zarelli. If you found this video interesting, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. This way, you won't miss any of our content.